Welcome to today's video. Today's video is five things that you might not know as a Model 3 owner. Now as a Model 3 owner, you probably already know that you have USBs in the back and USBs in the front, or the new models have USB-Cs as well as USBs. However, I didn't know is where the cigarette lighter was and most people didn't even know there was a cigarette lighter when I asked five owners where the cigarette lighter is they said it doesn't have one because it's got USB cigarette lighter is underneath here underneath all this and it's basically just down here there's a little flap with a cigarette lighter so you can still power some standard electronics that you might have had from before or even I don't know a sat nav with um, uh, cameras on now many Model 3 owners will know that you can play games on the Model 3 like this Beach Buggy Racing 2. What they also know is that you can play the Beach Buggy Racing using the brake pedal on the car and the steering wheel to control it but that will scrub your tyres and it's also not great and many of you may have noticed that when you enter this game it has two player options, player one, player two. So how do you play two players? Well. There's two ways of playing two players, down in the USB sockets, just plug in yourself, an Xbox or PlayStation remote, basically any USB game remote that can plug into the USB sockets. Um, on the moment, I've got USB-C to adapter to this PlayStation rem uh, Xbox remote, and then we can just pick one player, pick your character, pick a track, and we can play just using the remotes. Now, it's actually better to use the remote for two reasons. One, you won't scrub your tires. Two, it's easier to play. And three, you can control all the bonuses like uh, shooting the bits out your steering wheel and various bits. Now, if you do want to play on the steering wheel two players, the other thing that people don't know is pressing these left and right are the ones that shoot the other bonuses here. So just try it, give it a go, see what you think. And it also saves your tires. But if you put two remotes in the car, both you and your kid can both play on two remotes while you're charging up at a supercharger. Now, one of my favorite features on the Tesla Model 3 is the reverse camera. It's very large. It takes up the majority of the screen. It's crystal clear. It's one of the best quality reversing cameras that I've ever seen on any car fitted. But someone made a request to Elon that the camera's great, but what about the wheels? We can curb the wheels. You can't see the wheels. You can't see the curb. You know, there's no 360 degree view on the Tesla. Can we see the wheels? Can, can we reverse better and see the wheels? And Elon went, yeah, of course we can. We'll, we'll use the cameras on the side. And to access that, there's a little up arrow here. Just swipe it up and you'll get the left and right camera. And as you can see here at the moment, and probably here on my sound, it is hailing down. Now, if like me, you've come from an Apple device or even an Android phone, as we know, Tesla does not, that's does not have Android Auto or Ca Apple CarPlay. And it doesn't look like they're ever going to add it. So if you're like me, you're okay with the satellite navigation that's offered by Tesla, but it's not great. It doesn't have speed cameras. It doesn't have a lot of uh, things that Waze has. So how can you access Waze? Well, you can actually get Waze on a Tesla. It's a bit of a roundabout way, but it does work. So first you need to do it before you set off. So open a web browser up. And when the web browser finally opens up, um, I've already got the website on, but it's there's a website there which I'll put down in the description, but the easiest way of finding it is just type in to Google to the top of the search stream. So it does a Google search, Tesla Waze, let the search run, scroll down to the very first page and it literally says Tesla Waze. Press that and Tesla Waze comes up. That is it. You've got a full Waze map, all the police locations, everything is there as if you had Waze. Now there's a couple of settings that you need to set if, if you want certain things on. So go through the settings menu, set all the settings that you want, weather, enforcements, etc. Once you've saved all the bits that you've done, it will change the hyperlink at the top, which is why it's important to put your settings in first. Then save it as a new favorite, add to favorites, and then if you ever want to find it, it's literally just under your favorites on, on there straight away. But to start a navigation, just press the little navigation button down there, type in where you want to go, 
and it's Waze. It works exactly the same as any other Waze. It's a little bit annoying it's not the proper one, but it's better than nothing. It's fairly reliable. I've had a bit of a thing. There's a small lag sometimes with the compass of where you are, but if you want all the sort of road traffic alerts, if you want speed cameras, then this is the only way of doing it on a Tesla. If the screen locks up or you have a fault with your car, you need to be able to reset it. And like all good computer companies, which is what Tesla is, are basically a tech company, they've designed a way to reset the screen if it locks up. And there's two ways of doing it. There's a soft reset and a hard reset. The soft reset, you literally just hold down these two scroll buttons and the screen will turn off and restart and the Tesla logo will come back up. That's a soft reset and nine times out of 10 that'll fix any problem with your screen locking up or other faults. If it's a more serious fault, um, maybe a problem with uh, not charging properly, therefore it's not the screen that's faulty, it's something else in the car, you'll need to do a hard reset. Hard resets are done a little bit differently, so it's foot on the brake all the way down. Once the brake's all the way down, you hold down the two scroll buttons and you keep them down. Normally, if the screen's locked up, that won't come up, and then the screen will go off, and then you can release both of these and the pedal, and the whole car will reset. So that's all the electronics on the car will go back into a reset mode. It doesn't factory reset them, it's just a restart. So it's a hard reboot of all the software in the car. Nine times out of 10, the soft reset of just holding the two buttons without the brake pedal will fix all your issues. But if it's a more serious issue, that hard reset will fix pretty much everything. If it doesn't, then you're gonna to have to ring up Tesla, uh, Tesla customer service. Now, I know some of these features may be obvious for some of you, but for others, people didn't know it. And if you've learned something new, give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't learned anything new, then give it a thumbs down. Any sort of indication like that to YouTube is a good thing. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you know anything else that you want me to report to other Tesla owners that not everyone knew was there. If you've enjoyed the video, share it with your friend. If you've got a friend who wants an electric car, share my YouTube channel with them. Help them buy an electric car. If you enjoyed this video, then check out next week's video or see the ones before. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.